Hi guys, thanks for being here and thanks for showing up for yourself. Today we're going to talk about my best skincare tips for anti-aging skincare in your 20s, your 30s, and your 40s. These are all things that you can do at home. Almost all of them will involve over-the-counter products and most are pretty budget friendly. We're not going to talk about like Botox or lasers or other injectables or procedures because I've never done those. Let's get started. So first things first, if you're not familiar with me, I'm 43 years old. I didn't get serious about skincare until I was in my early 30s, so it's been about 10 years and I had a lot of damage to repair already at that point. I've been really, really lucky to learn from and speak to people from a lot of different age groups and a lot of different knowledge levels. What I'm sharing here is what I've learned are the best ways to work with the natural changes in our skin over time so that we can keep on doing the best for our skin at any age. We're going to start with anti-aging skincare best practices that everybody of every age who cares about this should be doing, and then we'll move on to what we can do in about our 20s, and then our 30s, and then our 40s. I can't really speak to anything past about mid-40s because I haven't lived it yet. I assume the next journey that I have to look forward to will be perimenopause and the changes that that will cause to my skin and what we do about that, but we're not going to think about that too much. We'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. I hope you find something helpful in here, and as always, there are timestamp chapters in the description if you want to just skip around, but of course I hope you don't, and I hope you like the whole video. Okay, we need some disclosures first. I want to keep this really high level. Everybody's skin is different, and everybody's aging journey is going to be different, so there's not going to be a lot of product recommendations or anything. If I do happen to show a product, and if the product was provided by a brand, or it was used for sponsored content, of course I will disclose it. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an esthetician, I speak from anecdote, from personal experience, and from the experiences of the probably hundreds or thousands of people that I've talked to about skincare and helped with their skincare routines over the years. I've also learned as much as I can from a layperson perspective of reading scientific papers and things like that, but I really, really want to emphasize I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to give medical advice, I'm not going to diagnose conditions, so just so you know where we're at. And the last disclaimer before we really get started, but I think it's important for this video. This is an anti-aging skincare video, so it should be pretty obvious what side I fall on here. But aging is not a bad thing. Aging is natural. It's inevitable. Our faces are going to change as the years go on. There's only so much we can do about it. If that's not something that you mind at all, or if you embrace it, that's awesome. This isn't the video for you, and no hard feelings if you click away. But if you're like me and you feel at your best and you feel at your most confident when you know that how you take care of yourself allows you to stay youthful looking for as long as possible, that's also valid and that's what I'm here to help you with. This isn't about looking 22 years old forever. I don't. No one my age is going to. That's totally fine. That's not the point. It's just about taking the steps to help us preserve what we have and maybe reverse some damage that we can so that we feel good. Of course, it's important to try to unlearn societal messaging around aging and our value as human beings when we age, but that takes years and years of effort. It takes years of work. In the meantime, life is short. I am here to help you feel good in your skin now so that you can enjoy your life however much we have of it for as long as you can. Let's get down to it. Anti-aging skincare tips that everybody of every age who cares about it should be following. Number one is having a good, consistent, basic skincare routine. I'm only talking about proper cleansing and moisturizer here. So with cleansing, there's a few different reasons. One is that whatever other skincare products you put on your skin will not work as well if you're not putting them on properly clean skin, simply because any kind of like residue, old oil, things like that, are going to stop the other products from absorbing into your skin as effectively as they could otherwise. But also, when we don't properly cleanse our skin, we leave things like environmental pollutants, irritants, allergens, other things on our skin that can accelerate the visible aging process by creating conditions where we receive more cell damage than we would otherwise. However, we don't want to go overboard with cleansing because that can also be aging. So I have a whole video of cleansing basics on my channel. You can refer to that if you're not sure what I mean. And being consistent with a moisturizer that's appropriate for your skin is also important for anti-aging for a few reasons. One is that maintaining good moisture levels in your skin 
helps your cells to function better and more healthily, really similar to how being hydrated in our bodies helps our bodies function better. Moisturizer is also a really good way to get in a couple of other helpful ingredients depending on what your skin needs, maybe antioxidants and things like that without having to add another extra step. Now getting into targeted preventative anti-aging skincare. It has become really, really trendy and it's very beneficial to the beauty industry for people to be using anti-aging prevention treatments and products from a really young age, like talking like 20, 21 years old. I hear about it a lot. I don't agree with most of this. I think a lot of it is just a cash grab and pretty toxic, but I will say that using a good vitamin C serum consistently for most of your life or as long as you can is really, really beneficial to delaying, preventing, and maybe even reversing some of the signs of visible skin aging. I'll tell you why. Vitamin C, especially if we looked at the most researched form, which is the ascorbic acid form, is a powerful antioxidant. When you apply it topically in a product that's formulated to help it actually penetrate skin, it helps to protect your skin from a lot of free radical damage that we get from things like UV exposure, pollution, even just stress, and the conditions of living in the world that we live in today. Vitamin C also helps to stimulate greater collagen production, since collagen production is one of the things that leads to visible skin aging. It's really, really helpful to have something on deck that is always working to counteract that. There are a lot of vitamin C serums on the market. There are a lot of different vitamin C derivatives with varying levels of research to show that they're effective. I've tried a lot of them. When you're starting out, I think the best and generally the most budget-friendly way to go is to look for ascorbic acid, or it's sometimes called L-ascorbic acid or LAA. Look for an ascorbic acid vitamin C serum with a concentration of something between 15 to 20% vitamin C. Even better if it also contains vitamin E, which is also known as tocopherol, and ferulic acid. And with ascorbic acid vitamin C serums, you will want one to be at a pH that's around 3.5 or so. So it's going to be an acidic pH. When you have all those conditions in place and the serum is packaged in a dark or opaque bottle to help prevent it from being exposed to light more than it needs to be, this is a really good, basic, well-researched way to start preventing some of the free radical damage that you'll experience throughout your life and help stimulate collagen production so that you can counteract natural collagen breakdown over time. Okay, so we've talked about cleanser, moisturizer, and vitamin C serum as the basic components of a good anti-aging skincare routine no matter how old you are, but none of those things and nothing else that you put on or have done to your skin will be effective for preventing, delaying, or reversing signs of visible aging unless you are also using if you're familiar with me, you know where I'm going with this, sunscreen. That is because sun damage is by far the biggest contributor to visible skin aging that we will encounter in our lives. So other lifestyle factors like smoking, drinking, or substance abuse will also age skin really fast, but we can choose not to do those things. Unless we live someplace like Antarctica or Scandinavia, we can't really choose not to encounter the sun in our daily lives. So what does sun damage do to skin? Apart from being a main contributor to the development of skin cancer, which is not my wheelhouse to talk about, sun damage causes accelerated collagen and elastin breakdown. That's what leads to the wrinkles and the sagging that we most often associate with aging skin. It also causes dark spots and it causes the more subtle but unmistakable signs of visible skin aging like coarser, thicker, rougher skin texture, uneven blotchy skin tone, and redness. So in order to prevent these, we have to be wearing sunscreen so that we don't get all that sun damage. The tricky thing is that it's not just about wearing sunscreen when we're going to be at the beach or we know we're gonna be at the park all day. Most of the sun damage that we accumulate in our lives is the incidental daily sun damage that comes from things like walking to the store, walking to your car, walking to your mailbox, whatever. These couple of minutes of sun damage here, couple of minutes of sun damage there, that's the main contributor to visible skin aging. So in order to prevent that, we wanna be wearing sunscreen whenever we're going out, every day. When it comes to anti-aging, if that's our priority, then we can't really just use any old shitty sunscreen that we got from Walmart. I'll explain to you why. There's two different kinds of UV radiation that we need to worry about. So there's UVA and there's UVB. 
UVB is shorter wavelength radiation. It's primarily responsible for sunburns, which are still bad. They are a risk factor for cancer, but it's responsible for sunburns, the more like superficial damage that will peel off. UVA radiation is longer wavelength. It penetrates deeper into skin, and that is what is responsible for the deeper cellular and DNA damage that lead to visible early skin aging. Good UVB protection isn't hard to find. So if you want to know how much UVB protection a sunscreen or an SPF product provides, all you have to do is look at the SPF number. The higher the SPF, the better the UVB protection will be, so the protection against sunburns. However, UVA protection is a little bit harder to make sure you're getting right. In the US, UVA protection is indicated by the broad spectrum designation. And all that really means is that this product has an amount of UVA protection that is determined to be like proportional to the UVB protection, but you don't get more than that. Like you won't know in what range it falls. So with Asian sunscreens, which is what I use and have always used ever since I got serious about skincare, UVA protection is much more clearly denoted. It's the PA rating. So this is PA with four pluses. Four pluses means that the UVA protection is in the highest range available on the market. I wouldn't even touch a PA one plus or two plus sunscreen for my feet. PA three plus is like okay-ish in a pinch, but for my face, my neck and my chest, PA four plus all the time. European sunscreens indicate the UVA protection with the PPD number. And from what I've heard, European sunscreens do offer really great, arguably sometimes higher UVA protection in some cases than Japanese or Korean sunscreens, but my understanding is that most are not as cosmetically elegant as the Asian sunscreens I use. Cosmetic elegance is extremely important to me and it should be important to you too, so that's what we'll talk about next. Like I said, for the purposes of anti-aging, you really want to make sure that you're using sunscreen every day or pretty much almost every day, just as much as you can if you're going to encounter the sun. That's not all. A little pea-sized touch isn't going to do it. Sunscreen is not. A little bit goes a long way. In order to get the advertised UVA and UVB protection on the product's label, you need to use a lot. Like a quarter teaspoon for face is the general guideline because of how the UV protection numbers are validated, like how they're tested. It works out to quite a lot of product. So cosmetic elegance comes into play here because with most sunscreens, like drugstore sunscreens are going to feel completely disgusting if you're actually using them in the generous amounts that you need to in order to get the full protection, whatever it is. So again, I'm not going to really do a lot of product recommendations here. I will say that my favorite sunscreens, like this year, my favorite is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence, combine high protection with high cosmetic elegance, meaning that they don't leave a white cast, they don't leave a greasy film. You can use them in really large quantities without feeling or looking disgusting. That's really important. So I'm just going to wrap up this sunscreen section by saying that I believe you will have the best results in terms of being able to use your sunscreen consistently and correctly if you look at Asian sunscreens. Let's recap before we move on to anti-aging skincare in your 20s, your 30s, and your 40s. So a good anti-aging skincare routine, no matter how old you are, will contain proper cleanser, moisturizer, vitamin C serum, and sunscreen. These are things that no matter what your age is will be helpful to you. Now, as we move on to different anti-aging skincare practices, depending on your age, I want to make it clear, the age ranges that I'm giving are not hard and fast. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's going to age a little bit differently and experience that differently. So I'm just using 20s, 30s, and 40s as convenient cutoff points. But it's more important for you to kind of think about what parts resonate with you to figure out where you are in this journey. So with that being said, you might be like 28 and feel that the advice for your 30s is more relevant to you, then go with what you feel is more relevant. Don't get hung up on the ages and the numbers.
starting with your 20s, or we can just refer to it as young adulthood. So in your 20s, in your young adulthood, your skin should be firing on all cylinders. So what I mean by that is that your skin's rate of renewal is pretty fast. It's pretty thorough, like you have really good skin cell turnover and your skin is most likely producing like sort of the maximum amount of moisture that it's going to produce in your life. So in your young adulthood, in your 20s, there's not a ton that you really need to do for anti-aging beyond the basics that we already covered of like cleansing, moisturizing, vitamin C serum, sunscreen. However, as we move into our late 20s, we might start to see some like textural issues that we associate with aging. So things like rough texture or some superficial fine lines. And in our 20s, in our young adulthood, we're often dealing with things like clogged pores and, you know, breakouts and things like that too. In that case, the fact that your skin's renewal rate is pretty good is an asset to you because that means that you can use strong exfoliating acids. So in your 20s, if you want to do things like smooth out superficial fine lines and get like a really smooth glow back, it is really helpful to use things like a strong peel, not every day, but more frequently than you will be able to when you're older. Something like the Ordinary's 30% AHA peel is going to be helpful and useful and your skin is going to be in a condition to be able to stand it. It's also a time in your skin's life when you can probably tolerate things like daily exfoliating acids like a BHA for blocked pores, this is stronger, this one is more gentle, the Closer X BHA is more gentle. You can use things like the Ordinary 7% glycolic acid every day or almost every day to maintain like a smooth skin texture and to kind of keep those blind clogs away. So story time, when I started blogging, the blogger that I looked up to the most was Carrie from Skin and Tonics. And Carrie had this like legendary blog post talking about her actives routine. I look back on it now, I think that she was late 20s at the time. So looking back on it now, and my acids routine was pretty similar, it is actually insane. Like she was using exfoliating, ac exfoliating acids pretty much daily. She was doing like strong, strong peels and her skin was amazing because at that age, your skin is turning itself over fast enough to be able to recover really quickly from that kind of exfoliation. So in your 20s, if you want to get that like maximum smooth, glowy, youthful skin, acids is where it's at. Moving into your 30s, let's say that's slightly less young adulthood, what starts happening to our skin is that our skin's renewal rate is slowing down. So our skin's not turning over as fast. We're not producing new skin as quickly as we used to. This is one of the contributors to the signs of skin aging. So when our skin is not renewing itself as fast, we should be dropping back on the exfoliation because if you exfoliate too much, it weakens the skin barrier, it thins out the upper surface of the skin. It's really counterproductive if you're trying to maintain really like plump, youthful, firm skin. So we wanna drop back on the exfoliants. In my later 30s, what I experienced was that if I was doing daily acids and then I tried to do an exfoliating peel once in a while, it was too much. The choice that I made was to start doing peels much less frequently and then as I continued to get older and my skin's renewal rate slowed down, to also drop back and pull away from daily exfoliating acids. So at this point, I don't use the Stridex BHA very much. I mostly use this for body. For my face, for just things like keeping pores clear on my T-zone especially, the only daily exfoliating acid I use is the Cozarex BHA Blackhead Power Liquid. That's because that one is very, very gentle. It's one of the few that I found I can use daily without it being too much for my skin. Now, I also also used to use a daily AHA. I used the Ordinary's Glycolic Acid. AHA, I found, was much more likely to over exfoliate my skin. Alpha hydroxy acids are water soluble. So when they penetrate to exfoliate skin, they'll penetrate everywhere. BHAs are oil soluble, so they're more for getting into pores. So it's more understandable that BHAs aren't gonna do that like all over, over exfoliation as easily as AHAs can. So in the 30s, I find that it's helpful to drop this stuff back to maybe a few times a week, just depending on what you see that your skin needs. 
And again, to drop back strongly on using strong exfoliating peels. Along with the slower rate of surface skin cell renewal, your skin in your 30s in your less young adulthood is also starting to produce less collagen and less elastin to replace what is breaking down over time or from sun exposure. Collagen and elastin, these connective tissues are the scaffolding of your skin. They're what hold it up, they're what help it keep its shape. Um, collagen and elastin breakdown is what leads to wrinkles and sagging as we've talked about before. So when your skin starts to produce less of it, it's time to start looking at ways to help stimulate it to produce more. And that is why I feel in the 30s is a really good time to start looking into retinoids. So there are tons of over-the-counter retinol and other retinoid products that you can try that are fairly gentle and a good way to ease yourself into it. I use prescription retinoid. I have a Curology prescription. I'm pretty sure I'm using like the highest percentage that you can get of this too, that retinoids and especially tretinoin are very, very potent topical ingredients that teach your skin to build itself better as if you were younger. So in addition to accelerating the skin renewal rate, they also help your skin to produce more collagen and more elastin. So that in conjunction with the vitamin C serum that you are using because I said so, are a really good way to actively delay or even start to reverse some of the collagen and elastin breakdown that you're starting to experience in your less young adulthood. Getting into the 40s, which is where I am now. So my skin's a natural renewal cycle continues to slow. Skin's natural ability to produce collagen and elastin have also slowed. So alongside with continuing to use my prescription tretinoin to help boost that collagen and elastin production and speed up some of the skin renewal rate, I have also started to only exfoliate much more gently than I used to. So at this point, I don't use this kind of strong peel anymore. By the way, the sun coming out is the best filter that anyone could ask for. Just so you know, that was just the sun. So I don't use this strong acid peel anymore at all because the risk of over exfoliating and causing irritation, inflammation, and just general nastiness to my skin is too great. When I want an exfoliating peel that's a little bit more than just, you know, once in a while using a contact sponge or something like that, I started using the Beekman 1802 Potato Peel. And this is one that I did want to highlight as a product. So this was provided to me by the brand. It's pretty recently released. This has a combination of alpha hydroxy acid and polyhydroxy acids, PHAs. So alpha hydroxy acids, of course, exfoliate your skin on the surface. This has a high enough concentration to be considered a peel. It's definitely not for daily use, and it's something that you rinse off after you use it. But the polyhydroxy acids also provide some more gentle exfoliation that doesn't penetrate skin too deeply. So this has been a really good way for me to get in some exfoliation, get that like smooth, bright glow without being too much for my skin in my 40s. Something else that's super fun that skin starts to slow down on in your 40s, or let's call it middle adulthood, is skin is also not producing as much moisture as it used to. Both the natural moisturizing factors that are like hydrating elements of your skin and the sort of lipid elements that form the barrier of your skin, production of all that decreases. So in your 40s or in your middle adulthood, it becomes more and more important to make sure that you are layering in enough hydration to replenish the hydration that your skin isn't really producing on its own anymore and to layer on enough surface moisture emollients and occlusives to hold the hydration in so at this point if you go look at my instagram look at my skincare routines you'll see that i use like a lot of layers of product when i can part of that is because a lot of those products have sort of supplementary like refining ingredients like snail ginseng propolis that my skin really benefits from but a lot of it is just at the base level as we get older our skin needs more hydration and more moisture to continue looking and functioning at its best to wrap up before we go on to my final messages that i also think are important my whole philosophy of anti-aging skincare revolves around working with the natural state of your skin so when we're younger and our skin renewal process is pretty fast and it's pretty thorough, we can use more exfoliating acids on the surface of skin because we're producing enough new skin 
to handle it. We also don't need to worry as much about collagen and elastin production because when we're younger, our skin is still producing plenty. As we get older and our skin renewal process slows down and we start producing less and less collagen and elastin, our focus has to shift from exfoliating the surface of skin to working on skin deep down in order to stimulate better cell renewal and more collagen and elastin production. So obviously like the 20s, 30s, 40s age groups that I mentioned, again, it's not hard and fast. You have to pay attention to your skin and how your skin responds to products and how your skin responds to your routine and figure out where you fall in this whole journey. Once you understand where your skin is at, you will be able to choose exactly the right products for your skin at any given time and you'll be able to identify when you need to change things up. And of course, throughout all of this, cleansing, moisturizing, vitamin C serum, and sunscreen. Going back to the overall purpose of this video. So I wanted to make this because I hear the fear of aging expressed a lot, even from really, really young people. Like if you're 18 or 19 years old and you're watching this video, I get you. I don't think you need to, but I understand why. Because we are taught to tie beauty to youth and value to beauty, especially as women, which is obviously the perspective that I'm coming from. That's what we're told. And so that drives a deep fear of aging. That's why anti-aging skincare is always popular. That's why people are always looking for these solutions. And I'm here obviously to help you with that, but I don't want to turn this into something toxic. I think we can all rationally agree that youth doesn't equal beauty and beauty doesn't equal value. We all know that in our heads. It can take a while for our hearts to catch up. Like I said in the beginning, we all can and should unlearn those toxic beliefs, but in the meantime, I am here to help you feel good and feel beautiful in your meat suit as it is now because life is short and you shouldn't put your happiness and self-confidence on hold until you can unlearn all of these societal beliefs. But there is one thing that I'm not going to be able to help you with. It is upsettingly common for the driving force behind someone's desire to look into anti-aging skincare, beauty treatments, and stuff like that to be because they're afraid that if they start showing aging, they won't be lovable anymore. They won't be attractive anymore. Whether that's to an unknown person that they're hoping to attract that they haven't met yet, or to the partner that they already have right now. If that's why you're here, because you're afraid that no one will love you anymore when you start to show age, I can't help you with that. First of all, it's not true. If this belief is coming from you, if it's not something that you're being told by a person in your life, that is something that you do have to work on because that is so super toxic to you and it will just ruin like everything in your life. This fear that no one will love you anymore if you're not young, if you're not youthful or beautiful. If this belief and this fear are coming from someone that is already in your life, like your partner that you already have, that is also very toxic and you are going to have to figure out if it's worth it to you to stay in an intimate relationship or close relationship with someone who isn't just going to love you exactly as you are at any given moment. Get a little personal for a second. So I have been dating my boyfriend for like about five years now, almost five years exactly. Um, obviously at the age that we met and the age that we are now, we have both obviously, I'm sure, visibly aged in that time because like I said, it happens, it's inevitable. In all those five years, I've never noticed him getting older. Like I could not tell you now if he looks any older than he used to because I love him. And he always is going to look the same to me because I love him. He's always just going to look like the person that I love. I have no reason to believe that he feels any differently because if you are loved, if you love somebody, you're not seeing their meat suit. You're not seeing their outside. And somebody that loves you isn't just seeing your meat suit and they're not clocking every little change that is happening to your meat suit. So if your fear is that you won't be loved because your meat suit changes over time, that is something that no amount of sunscreen and creams will help with that's internal and that absolutely has to be worked on, I believe, for you and for your happiness so that you can feel good.
do this for yourself. Do this to feel confident and feel happy in your own skin. But know that your beauty persists. Your beauty that comes from inside, that comes from like the person that is in your meat suit. That doesn't go away. That won't change because you got white hairs and you got a few wrinkles. That's not something to worry about. Don't do this for something external. Don't do this for what you think society will think. Don't do this because you're afraid a partner won't love you anymore if you're getting older. Because those are things that are not in your control. Those, what you have in your control is your meat suit and your feelings about your meat suit. So just do what you can for yourself. That's how you can take these kinds of beauty routines and make them healthy for you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to me blabber on about all this stuff. If you want links to any of the products that I show, look in the description box. And of course, if you like this, please like and subscribe for more. Thanks guys.